<laughs> hey gifted crafters welcome back to my channel if you're tuning in for the first time my name is nancy with gifts hq and this is live number 13 can't believe it's at 13 already wow Alrighty. so if you're wondering what this channel is all about i host weekly live sessions and we talk about everything crafting from sewing embroidery knitting crocheting and so much more so thank you so much for tuning in and i hope you enjoy our session today all righty let's just get right to it because we have a lot to cover today um before we go any further please let's do our technology check if you can see me and hear me please go ahead and put it in the chat so that i know that we're working okay and then we can go ahead with our program today because i got so much to show you and i want to make sure that you guys can see everything and hear everything so please let me know okay last week we talked about mylar or iridescent film and i shared a lot of projects with you that i've been working on and we had a pretty good session i think it was pretty well received a lot of you seem really interested in it so if you didn't get to see that go ahead and tune back to live number 12. Um, you can see that video out there and all the information's out there and links for you to find the the products that we were looking at as well okay let's see now i'm gonna go ahead and pause and let's just take a quick look at all of our gifted crafters out there so i see robin i see evimar boricua sewing and crafts we have iris judy one minute tips and son doris miles thank you guys so much for joining today and I hope you guys really enjoyed today's session. It was a lot of fun and I, I'm going to share with you a lot of the things that I struggled with and a lot of things, you know, tips and things that I have for you today. So what is today's topics? Well, we're going to talk about quilting templates. But before we even get into that, I just have a really short announcement to make on the trivia. Now, I know you guys really enjoy the trivia and I know you guys really have put a, a lot of good content out there now i think you guys really uh struggled with a little of the questions today so let me just go over the answers it was origami cross stitch uh the third one was 12 inches and the fourth one was quilting templates which is our topic for today now just the announcement on the trivia questions as i promised last week we went ahead and we put all of the um, trivia champions on our community page. So if you go out to our community page, you'll see the top leaders that are there. And we're gonna continue to track those every week as we give out those trivia questions. And so at the end of the year, we're gonna see our top trivia champions that'll have all the bragging rights. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just see if I can do a little prize for them. So I hope you guys enjoy those trivia questions. It seems like you guys have really um, have just really enjoyed that. And I think that it's going to be a lot of fun to have that little bit of a competition. And you guys can also just learn things as we go along. All righty, let's jump right to it. So this is something that... I had for a while now, I um, can't tell you exactly when it was that I purchased this because it was just such a long time ago. I just never really got to dabble it. So like many crafters, you know, we sometimes get things and put them out on the shelf and swear we're going to get to it and then we never do. So <laughs> this is something that I purchased. It's from Dabline and I put links to all of these items in the descriptions below in case you're interested and wanted to go ahead and find it. Um, I don't believe it was expensive. It was maybe around the $30 range or so. Um, don't know if the price has fluctuated since then, but it is from Dabline and it's a quilting tem template set. Okay, so I really like the way they packaged everything on here. It was pretty nice the way everything came included. Um, I've opened and closed this quite a number of times and I try to keep it, you know, well organized, but you know it kind of wear and tear after a while so it does give you a set of gloves which is nice 
And some people use the gloves, some people don't. It's really a matter of preference if you do. What the purpose of the gloves is to help you give get a better handle when you are holding on to your template and the fabric and it helps you guide the ruler better so that you can just continue to do your project so you know some use them some don't i find them pretty helpful so i like to use them but you don't have to okay um the other thing that it comes with you know, start from the bottom and let me just take this out of the plastic here. I like to keep them in the plastics because they are acrylic. And I kind of like that they, you know, when they ship it to you, it does have a film that's attached to it. So it doesn't get any scratches when they're shipping it to you and it shifts around. There's no scratches on here, which is what I really like. So i actually enjoyed you know the way they package they really took the time to put it really nicely for me okay um let me just make sure i wasn't forgetting anything okay so this is the template frame and let me set this over to the side so some people use this and you again this is something it's a matter of preference you don't necessarily have to but it does make it a little bit easier it does have these little handles on the side where it lets you grip that so it's a little hard to see because it is acrylic but it's a, like a little um maybe half inch lip on here that allows you to just kind of hold on to it and what you'll end up doing is putting the template that you choose inside of this frame and then it allows you to move it about by holding on with your gloves and you know just pushing through Okay, these are, in this particular template, these are the ones that came included. And actually, it was quite a lot that they give you. Um, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight templates in total. So it's quite a lot. And let me just get, hold on. I'm going to try to get something in the way. And I'm going to see if you guys will see this a little better if I put it on top. I think that shows a little bit better for you. Or you know what? Yeah, that shows a little better. What I'm going to do is I'll have something later on that I can put it on that you can see it a little better. But um, just in case you can't see it, you know, let me know in the chat and I'll try to get a better angle for you guys. So this is what the frame itself looks like. And um, let's see if I can get the sides for you. It's a little bit difficult there, but you could see a little bit of that side. So that's where you would grab onto it and move the ruler around. Now, the kit does come with these and you can purchase more of them. They're by 3M. There are these little silicone holders. And what you do is you put them on the back of the template as well as the frame. I just added them on here, if you guys can see that. There's these little silicone things. And what they do is they just prevent the ruler from sliding around. So it's something that, you know, kind of helps it, really holds it into place when you are actually doing the quilting. Now, dab line gives you a bunch of them. I'm going to try to find one that I didn't take the film off of just so I could show you what it looks like. This specific template is called the Meander. And this is, it gives you a nice little design on what it looks like once you've quilted it out. And it also, they give you some ideas as well because you don't necessarily have to do it the way they're showing you. You know, that you can be creative as you want to be able to do what you want on them. And they have some template usage instructions. So it'll tell you where you should start. And then as you go through your sewing machine, you'll notice some of the templates will have an opening where you can then just flip it over and move it. But what I wanted to show you is this. You can see a little bit of the film and it kind of is a little difficult to see, but you'll see how this template is a little dull. 
and the reason is it does have a film and it does come with this little piece and this little round circle thing i'm not sure exactly what it's called but all this is is to help you remove the film that they put in the back and then that film is what they use to protect the actual template so that it doesn't get scratched when it's getting shipped over to you but what you do is when you get this little thing you just kind of scratch over the side with it and then that'll peel off a little bit of the film and then just kind of take the rest of it off so some people actually even leave it in it's really a matter of preference it's just with the film it makes it a little bit duller to see through it and this is one that does not have the film since i've already taken it off and let me just show you what that looks like so this one i guess is a little bit clearer let's do it this way so you can see how this is a little more clear and you can see right through it okay so the second template that I opened up is called Which Way. And what you do is you put your presser foot here and you just sew around the template here. Now you'll see the little lip here. That's if you want to remove this, you can take it off and slide it off without lifting up and taking your thread out, you know, without lifting anything up. You can just lift up the presser foot, but you leave your needle down and then you can take the template off, reposition it however you want, flip it over, you know, it depends on the design that you're looking to make. So in this specific one, it has, each template has its own little card. And this one, it's called the Which Way Border. So there's different designs that you can do. So as you can see, you have one that looks like a wave, then you can have the second one where you can just kind of do circles. And then you have this third design that looks a little bit interesting. So this one has just kind of the uh, num looks like a number eight with like an oval around it and they all kind of connect. So I thought that was pretty neat. And that could be something different. Now, again, you don't necessarily have to use the ruler the way they are telling you on the cards. These are just suggestions. You can pretty much make your own design with these templates, which is what I really love about that. So let me put these to the side. I'm gonna show you a couple of the other ones that came with it. And then I'm gonna share with you a couple of tips on how you set up your machine and get things going. So let me just put this over to the side. Okay. Here's another one. This one is called Cotton Candy. It's a little fun. So this is what Cotton Candy would look like. And I thought that's a really fun one to put on your quilts. And even if you're just quilting the borders, you know, it's something that, you know, you can control how much or how little you want to quilt. So this one here, again, it has the little instructions, this is the template usage instructions, and it tells you, you know, where you would start, where you would end, you know, how you can actually do these. And for this specific one, it does have a center line that you would line up. So if you want all of your cotton candy or clouds, it's kind of like what it reminds me of, you would line the center line up so you would use a fabric pen to mark your fabric with the center line and then you would line this up to that line and just begin to quilt all around the template. And then you can kind of flip them over this way so you'll have a cloud over here and a cloud over there. Or you can just continue to go the same way. So that's where, you know, you get to choose how you want to quilt and how you want the result to look like. So another one that they have is called the swirl. Okay. And this is the swirl. I think it's pretty neat. This one's a lot of fun. And these are the instructions for it. 
and here is the template itself. This one again, a lot of them have guidelines that you can use, which is nice because they're clearly marked and you're able to line it up however you want in your project. So it's really helpful to have, but again, you don't necessarily have to use the lines. You can do this any way you want. It's free motion. So it gives you that ability to just be as creative as you want. So that's what I really love about these templates, you know? Okay. Let me just pause a little bit. I think we have a couple of questions out there and I want to make sure that I captured a few because I shared quite a few already. And let me just see. Yep. Yeah, all righty. Wow. <laughs> you guys are really loving that trivia. I love it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, we we have a few more people that sh that came in. Let's see now. Sarah Doris Miles, thanks for joining. Iris, thanks for joining. Judy. Nice. Okay. So Judy says, I have this kit, only played with it a couple of times, but it's really cool how I've played with a piece of scrap fabric. Exactly. So all you would do, like I used the, you know, you guys know that I love the Dollar Tree. So I went into the Dollar Tree store and I just bought one of those fabric rolls. And I used that with a little bit of batting. Um, I did that for a while for a couple of different test ones that I did. And then I switched over to felt and just tried to use the felt to see if I can, you know, get the same results. So I'll share that with you guys. But um, those are pretty fun. I mean, it, it takes some time to learn it and to, you know, really get it on point. I'm going to show you some of my boo-boos and a lot of things that I did wrong when I was uh, playing with these templates. So I'll show you a couple of those here. Okay. So a couple people were asking about the shank. So Judy says the metal thingy, that's a shank. Depending on the machine, you'll need a higher low shank. I had to go look. We're going to talk about that because I'm going to show you what those look like. All righty, I think we're good for now. A lot of people talking about the foot and um, and the template. So I'm glad you like those. So I've got a couple more I'm gonna show you and then we're gonna flip over to the machine and I'm gonna show you what you need to do to set up your machine when you're going to start doing some of these. Okay, so the next one that came in this specific packet is the bubble border. And this one's pretty popular. I've seen this one a number of times in other quilts. Um, this one is just really much you're, you're kind of making the bubble and you're you're bumping them up against each other. But I've also seen them separated. So it doesn't necessarily have to be on top of each other the way they indicate on this card. And again, it just has the instructions for you, which are nice. This one also has the film, so I haven't taken the film off of this one, but this is what the actual template looks like and the guidelines are there for you so you can line them up to your project as you continue to quilt. Okay. Now, this next one is really popular during the Valentine's Day season and I know some of you guys out there um, do a lot of selling through craft shows and stuff. So this was something that you may want to consider when you're working on your next project. And it's called a heart border. And this is what it looks like. So it's kind of just taking the heart and then flipping it over to the other side. And it's just, you create this nice little border of hearts, which I think is really cute. And then you can see on the back, of course, you have your instructions for there as well. And the template itself does have some guidelines to help you. And you can see that here. You've got that center line as well as the two ends. So it really makes a cute design, you know, when you are working with it. 
So I think this one, especially for Valentine's Day, it's gonna come sooner than you think. So this is a nice one to have. Now, something more closer to the holidays is a Christmas template. And this one has a really nice holly template. This is what it looks like, which is really cute. If you're looking at doing a Christmas project and you want to quilt your borders with these hollies, it's really adorable. And this is the template card with the instructions. And this is what the actual template looks like. In this case, it's kind of like you're getting two templates in one because you have the holly shape and then you have a little circle on the side. And that, that little circle is to represent the little berries that you're putting on top. And you have the option to make just one berry or you can do two or three or you can put them as close or as far apart as you want when you're actually quilting it. So that's something that, you know, you can do this on any type of project, whether it be a quilt that you're making for your bed, you know, tablecloths, table runners, you know, placemats. There's so many different projects that you can make with these items so the templates can really go a long way remember i do have a link down below if you're looking to purchase these um this is the set that i bought i believe it is still available and with the same templates that i'm showing you today they also have other ones out there too so you'll want to take a look you know to see which one's gonna best fit your project and then the last one that i have here that came into this packet is the circle template oops and it comes in two <laughs> as you can see so on this one it's almost like you have two templates in one right so you will have let me just flip this over you'll have this one so you can create that outer circle or you can put this circle in here and just not use the outer one if it this will kind of give you a different way to use the template they both have the guidelines so you'll see the guidelines are there for you whether you decide to just use the circle or the frame itself and you can decide which one works best for your project but this is what the circle would look like now you could do the two like this you could just do one circle or you can do the two circles like they've outlined by using the inner circle and the frame itself so it depends exactly what you're looking to accomplish on your project so these are all the templates that come in the dab line um, box here again link is below if you guys are interested it's a lot of fun i think it comes with everything that you need to get started so i really enjoyed it you know i wish i had some more time to play around with this but i'm going to show you a couple things that we did but before we get to that let me just move this over to the side because i want to talk about my machine here let me grab this out of the way now this is my older machine it is a brother hc 1850 and it's a sewing and quilting machine so it does come with the table which is removable and this is what I use for my quilting. And as you can see here, I do have a quilting foot attached. Now, this is not just any quilting foot. This foot is very specific to templates. So there are different types of feet that are out there, as you guys know. But the, the type of foot that you want to get in order to do projects with these templates is a template is is a some people call it the darning foot you know it's not going to be the same one that you see out there for other projects okay this foot actually is one that's specific for templates so when you go to look for these feet you have to make sure that they are specifically for templates 
And the reason you want to do that is because the foot itself is wider than an actual quilting foot that would normally come with machines like this. So it's definitely something you want to research when you're looking at it. I initially did not buy the quilting, the, the foot for quilting templates. I just had a quilting foot and I can tell you a lot of the things that went wrong was because I was not using the correct foot. What ends up happening is because the foot is not as thick as it needs to be, it tends to go underneath the template while you're trying to quilt. So definitely you'll want to invest in a quilting foot that is specific for templates. And they do sell them out there. You just have to Google them. You know, all that information is out there and you can purchase it. They're really not that expensive. Um, and you can pick them up at your local um, sewing store. I'm sure that they have them out there. Okay, so let's see if I missed anything here. So one of the things you wanna talk about is the setup of the machine. So when you have your machine, this specific machine has it located in the back. So I'm gonna remove the table just so I could show you exactly where the lever is. Okay, so back here, you're gonna see this little notch. And this is just where you can put your feet dogs up and your feet dogs down. When you are doing the this type of project using these templates, you're going to want to make sure that your feet dogs are down. And what that will do is it will make sure that the teeth of your sewing machine are completely down and you should be able to move your finger above it freely without feeling the teeth underneath. That will allow you to move the fabric smoothly and you'll be able to you do your quilting project with a lot of ease. Now, some of these machines have the notch in the back, some are in the front. You really have to look at the type of machine that you have and just look at your, you know, refer back to your sewing manual. It'll tell you exactly where it is where well, you'll be able to lower those feet dogs so that you can glide your fabric. Now, they do also sell these acrylic mat things that also help to move your fabric and slide things across. I don't have one of those, but they are available out there. I've never tested one out. I've heard some things about them. Um, so I may pick one up and just test it out. And when I do, I'll let you guys know. Okay, so definitely you'll want to have your feet dogs down. You want to make sure that you're using the right sewing foot. And the third thing that you're going to want to do is to make sure that your stitch length is set to zero. Now, why do you want your stitch length set to zero? Well, that's really important because when you are free motion quilting, you are pretty much your own stitch regulator. So you are moving the fabric as quickly or as slowly as you would like, which basically allows you to just be able to kind of maintain how wide or how short you want your stitch length is to be. So as your needle goes up and down, you're controlling how quickly or how slowly that fabric is gliding through it. So when you do your stitch uh, length to zero, it allows you to control that. And you definitely want to have that because when you're doing the templates and you're moving that fabric around, you wanna be able to glide through it and go either as quickly or as slowly as you want. And you don't want the feet dogs or for the stitches to be at a set motion. You want to set that motion. You want to be able to glide it and control what your design is going to look like. So that's another tip as to the things that you want to set up on your machine before you start your free motion quilting. Again, make sure that you're using your right foot. 
make sure that your feet dogs are down and then make sure that your stitch length is set to zero. Okay, so those are the, the items that you're gonna need to set up your machine. So I'm just gonna set this over to the side. Okay, and let me just see, do we have any questions out there? Let me just do a quick check. Alrighty. Okay, so Barico Sewing and Crafts says they would look great on Christmas placemats. Yes, they would. <laughs> One minute tip says, I think I need this for Christmas. <laughs> he says that I'm strong. Yes, I'm lifting the machine. <laughs> no, it doesn't weigh all that much, but yeah. It was great. Let's see. The notch is on the back of the Brother SC 1900 as well. That's true. Um, I didn't want to undo my SC 1900, so I grabbed the, my older machine because that one's pretty much the one that's set up for quilting, and I, I use that one a lot. So now let's see. Uh, I accidentally moved that button and thought I broke my SC 1900 because the feet dogs were down and wouldn't move. I learned the hard way. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's see. One minute tip says this is very informative. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. And okay, I think you guys are good. I don't see any questions right off the bat. I think you guys are enjoying this, which is awesome. Okay. So something else that I want to show you that is also was part of this project so this is a quilt that i just kind of threw together quickly i had some extra fabric and i know halloween is just around the corner and i said you know what i should just use up this fabric so all i did was sandwich my top fabric with some batting in the middle and then i got some black fabric for the back and one of the things I wanted to show you is just a small piece of fabric so it's probably just going to be a little table topper that I can just put on here and I thought you know this would be fun to just quilt um, I don't have anything specific planned for it maybe I'll put a little rickraff on the edges and just do some quilting on it thought it was a fun little fabric to do so one of the things I wanted to share was how people actually sandwich their quilts together. So there's, there's several different ways that you can do it, right? Some people prefer the traditional method where you just take your pins, such as this one, you know, and you're just going to pin your fabric together, just like this. So you have that little pin showing there. So that's one way of doing it. Another way you can do it is using safety pins. Some people just like to put safety pins, you know, maybe about, I don't know, about a hand apart from each other. So they just kind of plop them and put safety pins. And this was just, again, to hold your top fabric, your batting and the backing all together so that it doesn't shift around. So some people use that. Now, I found some other people use something that I thought was pretty interesting, and it's called a quilter's basting gun. And it kind of just looks like, you know, back in the old days, you used to have a, um, used to have those price tags that people would go, you know, if you're working at a retail store, you have to price the items with this little gun. This is kind of reminds me of that. It's something like that, but this is more, I think they use it a lot in the retail area in order to put those little price tags that hang on the clothes. So this one, I picked it up. Um, I didn't really save a lot of the packaging because there wasn't really much to save, but it's called Quilter's Basing Gun and it's by Loops and Threads. And I believe that I got this from Michael's, I want to say but this is what it looks like it does come with a cap and is a really sharp needle on the inside so you can see that needle there so it is pretty sharp so you always when you're not using it you want to definitely 
have this top on here and all you do it does come with a bunch of these little tags and it's it's a lot of them it's gonna be a while before i go through all of these but you know if you're not a fan of pinning or using the safety pins or even using the basting spray then you could have this as another option so the way you use this is by taking these little things here that they give you if i can take one apart here we go so what you do is you just first load this into the top and once you have it loaded then all you're going to do is you're going to take this pointy side of the gun and you're going to insert it into your fabric. So I'll put it all the way in here. And I'll make sure that it is all the way on the other side. So let's see if you could see that. You can see that it's sticking out. And then all you're going to do is make sure it's up against the gun and just kind of just hit your the lever and then what that does is it now will put the little tag and i'll flip it because you probably can see it better from this side you can see the little tag is here so it just puts that little plastic piece and it'll hold it together. You don't have to worry about pins and picking, you know, pricking yourself every time. That's one of the things that I have. I'm always pricking myself on these little pins, but the safety pins, you know, wasn't really a fan of either. I, I personally like to use the spray, but then sometimes I just don't want to have those fumes and sprays around. And I don't like that sticky residue that sometimes gets around the things around it. So this is just another alternative that you can use for that. So, you know, it just puts these little plastic tiny pieces and it will hold it together. So I actually like that. And I did a couple on the back here. You can see a few of them that I've already put in. And when you're done with it, you just take some scissors and you just snip them off. So they come off pretty easily. So I thought that was pretty neat. I just wanted to share that with you guys because that's another alternative that you have when you are putting your quilts together. Okay. Now, another template that I did find out there it's called the honeydew and i have the links for that as well down below and this is just another pack that you can get it's not as complete as the dab line has so dab line does have you know it gives you the gloves it gives you the complete package or the kit this one is just the template itself and there's just a few of them here that it came with and this one is called the fan let me move this over to this side so you could see it better there so this one is called the fan and it's just basically these types of templates are ones that you can use to create like a flower type effect so they go all the way around so you would start here you would quilt this and then you would continue to move the template all the way around and you would have a unique design so this is one that they have there's one that's called the fan flower which is the second one this one is called fan oist and fan de dehaya not sure if i said that right <laughs> Now, these are all four and a half inch designs, so it's a little bit smaller than what the dab line has, but it depends on your project. You know, if you have a little bit smaller area to work with, then these actually would work. And then this one's got the shape of the little butterfly, which I thought was pretty neat. So it just says feathers in a straight line. So it just looks like little butterflies that you can kind of just 
continue to go down the line and create, you know, that effect. So it looks like the little butterflies are just flying off of your quilt. So I thought this was really pretty. It's something that you could use a lot of, on a lot of different projects. So definitely something you'll want to look at. Now I use this one here, which is called a spinning flower. And this was one of the ones that I did on felt. And this is just an example of what it would look like. Let me just, now it's not perfect. I was still kind of learning when I did this one. But you could see that, you know, you have the colors of your thread that'll really pop. And depending on your project, you know, you may have a real busy fabric and you just want it to kind of blend in. Or if you have a fabric like this backing, which is completely black, I may put just a fun pop of color to really let the design come through. So definitely, you know, something that you can play with, you know, a lot of things that you can do with these templates. And, you know, they're just a lot of fun. They're just a lot of ways that you can get creative. And one of the things that I did before I started to do them on fabric themselves, just to kind of um, save on some fabric, was I drew them out on a piece of paper. And it these drawings are not like, you know, to perfection. This was me trying to figure out how these templates work and how I can get them to kind of join in the middle. So you can see here, you know, it's not the best thing. This one is called the Fan Flame. And this template, you know, it was a lot of fun. It, I found it a little difficult to get it in the middle, but I think that by just drawing it on paper with the template and moving it around, it, it kind of helps you figure out what do I want this to look like? And it helps you plan out how you want your quilts to look. Because one thing you could do is just, you know, have just two, or you could do the four, or you could just do one and have that one floating across your quilt. So there's so many different designs that you can make just with the one template. It's just, you know, it's up to how creative you are and how the look that you're looking to obtain on your project. Okay, another one that I drew out was this one that is called a fan petal. And this is what it looks like. And this is what the drawing, you know, I was just kind of playing with this one as well. So it's a lot of fun, you know, a lot of ways that you can get creative on here. So now what I want to show you we do a little time check. Okay. I just want to show you a couple of my failures on some of this stuff. Okay. Well, first, here's the fabric that I use from the dollar store. This is just the Crafter Square fabric that, you know, I you can pick them up at the dollar store. I have a ton of these. And this is what I use when I'm doing all my practicing for templates or, you know, anything that I'm looking to create, you know, these are great, inexpensive, and just, you know, I'm able to just work with these to figure out exactly what I want to do. Once I have it all figured out, then I go to my fabric that of my choice that I'm going to work on the project on and I'm able to just work through them. Okay. So let's see, where do we start? Let's start with the swirl. So this was one that I did. Now you can see there's a little bit of a nick here and it shouldn't be there. But what ended up happening is as I was quilting it, you know, I was pressing down on the template and in one side, I wasn't really pressing down on it. So what happened was that the template itself got caught underneath the foot of the machine and then I had to press it down and then it re released it but it kind of destroyed the motion that I was doing so that's why you see a little bit of this jagged edge if you will 
on the actual design. So you do have to be careful when you are quilting to make sure that you have your hands steady on the template itself. Don't push down on one side more than the other. Try to keep that pressure even as you are gliding the template onto your fabric with your machine. So that's something that, you know, did happen to me. And I said, oh, you know, that's because it, it, you know, I wasn't holding on to the template properly. Now, tension. I had a lot of problems with the tension and this is the ugliness of it. This is what you will end up if you don't do the tension correctly. You have a lot of little nest going on here. And that's something that I struggled with quite a lot when I was doing these. And on here, you can see where I started off here, my bobbin thread was super low. And so I had issues and the bobbin was super, super loose on the bottom, almost to the point that I could probably just pull it out. And then you can see, you know, I changed the bobbin and so then it got better, but you see some of these just didn't come out. And you'll see here in the beginning, I have that little nest here that I do not like to have. So these are things that you wanna check your tension when you are doing these types of projects because you don't want this to look like this on the back of your projects. So you definitely wanna be careful with that. Okay, this was another design and these, this was um, part of the dab line collection. This one was as well. And this one is just a mix match. I wasn't sure which way I was going to be doing this. This was with the waves Then I turned around the template and I did it as like, looks like the number eight with the little wavy here. I wasn't too thrilled with how it came out. I know I probably need some practice on this, but this is definitely something, you know, that when you are looking to work with templates, you do have to know practice, practice, practice. You know, you cannot just think that you're going to buy these templates, throw it on your machine, and you're going to come out with this really beautiful design. It does take a lot of practice, and you do have to get some little scraps, such as these from the dollar store, to practice on, because they do make a difference when you actually go to do your project itself. You don't want it to end up like these with the jagged edges that I had. You can see a couple of them here that were kind of hard to see, but there's little jagged edges that I did run into when I was doing it. Overall, you know, it's really not that bad. If you're not a quilter, you know, you may not even notice, you know, unless you're really focused onto it. But, you know, I like to have it looking really nice. And if you're looking at selling some of these, that's something you'll want to perfect before you actually sell these to customers. Let's see, a couple of the other ones that I did. And these are just, you know, I was just kind of playing around and going all over the place with this. You see the little petals. I couldn't get the center correctly. You know, so I, I was playing a little bit with that. Um, this was one of the butterflies. You know, here's another one here that I was playing with. You know, this one was one of the smaller. So these were part of the other collection. And that would be, this was the fan diamond one. So that would be this template here. And you could see just the one, or you could even just make it a little kite, depending on the design that you're doing. Or, you know, you can try to make it like a flower, like this one. So it's just practice, practice, practice. Um, I'm going to keep working on these. And, you know, there's all so many fun designs that you can make. So, you know, you can really have a great time with this. Okay. Some of these others are another option that you have is working with felt. I did this on felt. Wasn't too crazy about it, but working with it wasn't too bad. And just as a scrap, just to play around with it. You know, I was able to do it on the felt and it worked just fine. You can see now my tension was a lot better now. <laughs> Didn't have any what I call rat nest on there. Um, it was just things that I was playing with. So what would you use these for? Well, besides 
the actual uh, fabric that I showed you here, like a little table runner that you want to do. You could also use them on panels. So I know I've shared this panel with you guys before, I believe. I did get this from Missouri Star. And it came in a kit, and it's just the Happy Harvest. And what I did was put the top fabric, I cut it to size, and then I added the batting. So what I did as well is I went ahead and put in the borders for them. So let me just kind of fold it in half so you could see it here. So you could see it says Happy Harvest. I added the border here on the side. And so all I'm missing to finish this project up is I need to find what my backing fabric is going to be. And then once I have the backing fabric, I'm going to go ahead and quilt the sides here. And I think that the smaller templates are just the right size for me to be able to use on this specific project. So, you know, each of the templates that you get, you know, you have to look at how much space you have to quilt. And these were actually perfect size that I'm gonna need for this project. So I'm not sure what thread color I'm gonna use yet on these or, if, or even which specific template, but this is something that you definitely can use to put these together. So let me just give you a quick look at what the entire thing looks like on this panel because it is pretty and i think it's going to be a cute addition that i can hang so let's see don't know if i can get this all in here there we go okay so it just says happy harvest homemade apple pie freshly baked apple cider pumpkin pie hay rides fall y'all it's fall y'all ha and harvest blessings on the bottom so i think it's really cute it has a nice little truck in the top and i think it's just something to add you know for this fall season okay so um just think of all the different projects that you can make and you know, you can get these types of panels. I've seen them in Hobby Lobby. I've seen them in Joann's. You can just, you know, pick a panel of your choice, get some backing fabric, and then add the little border to it. And then on that border, what you can do is just then take the templates and you can just put the designs of your choice all around that project so i think that's a really quick idea to just do a wall hanging or you know whatever it is that you would like the panel to be so now let me just drop over and see if we have any questions here let's see now okay oh wow <laughs> let's see okay so Robin says, uh, <laughs> creative mistake. Yes, it is. I, I make a lot of creative mistakes, I can tell you. That's just one of the ways that I like to learn. It's kind of, you know, I read the instructions on something that I buy, but then I always think, well, how else could I use this? What could I do with this? And then I like to just kind of play with other things and other fabrics and see what can I come up with that's different from what they're telling me what to do. So I like to be that little, you know, Devil's advocate, I guess. <laughs> All righty, let's see. So one minute tip says it's good to see others have flaws, too. I know I go through so much frustration sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, I, it, it's something that we all go through and I wanted to be able to share not just, you know, the things that I'm able to complete and that look pretty, but there's tons of mistakes out there too and i like to share those with you so that maybe you guys don't make the same mistake okay judy says yes it's the best way to learn let's see one minute tips she says uh costly at times but i am ho the best way <laughs> let's see judy says yep that's how we learn robin says she likes that we all make mistakes uh, let's see. Yeah, hit the like button, guys. Thanks, Boricua, Sonny, and Kraus. If you like the video, please don't forget to go ahead and hit the like button. It really helps out the channel, so I appreciate that. 
Let's see. One minute tip says for for suits for soup to nuts. Miss Nancy has taken us through this quilting template journey. I learned so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All righty. Judy says, oh my God. Well, I love that. How beautiful. Great. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad. Looks like you guys really love it. Awesome. Great. So, you know, templates, there's all kinds of different ones out there. So, you know, pick a template that you like, you know, try to master it. You know, it's going to take some time for you to get used to it. Just make sure that you have the right equipment before you get started. You know, pick your threads, you know, look at the fabrics that you're choosing. Try to find things that'll make your thread pop. Or if you have a busy fabric and you just want the thread to kind of mingle in, you know, just make sure you get the threads that coordinate with the project that you're working on. And with the templates, it's all about the practice. You know, just make sure feet dogs are down. Make sure that your stitch length is set to zero and make sure that you are using the right quilting foot for your machine. And every machine will vary, so make sure you do your research to make sure you get the right one that will fit your machine. Some of them are low shank machines and some of them are high shank. A lot of the newer ones are more low shank machines, and that's a lot more of what you'll find. But if you do have an older model that has a high shank, you can get an adapter that is available for you to be able to use the quilting foot as well. So check out for that as you're doing your research. Okay, so I think that's it, folks. So I really hope you enjoyed this channel today. And I hope I was able to give you a lot of tips for your quilting needs. So thank you so much. Don't forget to go ahead and join our Facebook group. If you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe um, so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. And I will be seeing you guys next week for our next trivia. And hope you guys uh, study up on your, your crafting tips because you may want to be the next trivia champion on our community board. So thank you guys so much for joining and I hope to be crafting with you soon. Bye guys. <laughs>